All right, today's objective, we are gonna re-gear the Mustang. That's kind of what we're back on today. The Ugly Truck Project is done. It's just waiting for, uh, today's Monday. We're waiting for Sunday. We have a race date coming up. I'm really excited about that. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna be re-gearing the Mustang. And before I start though, I'm just running to the machine shop real quick. We're dropping off the 5.4 liter four cam motor or just the block basically. We're gonna get it hot tanked, we're gonna get it honed, we're gonna get it line honed because we have uh, some ARP main bolts that'll throw off the tolerances on the main cap. So we'll get that touched up. Threw the flywheel in there so they can resurface that and then the crankshaft, I wanna see if they can get that polished out and smoothed up a little bit. So that's today, um, back to the machine shop and back to the not machine, home shop. It is 35 degrees out and snowing, and dude is in a convertible with the top down. Whew. Had to stop at Costco on the way home, and it has started storming out. See how these nittos do in the snow. All right, guys, I need your help coming up with a name for this project. Um, the one that's at the top of my list right now is, ooh, that was a bad move, uh, was the Coyote Killer. Not because I have anything against the small animal, but because the goalpost for performance of this car in the first stage is a brand new Coyote powered Mustang. So somewhere around 400 horsepower at the wheels is what we're shooting for, but using a 20 year old engine design, which most people write off. That's, remember, specialize in things that don't make sense, that's what I'm all about. So the Coyote Killer is going to get some new gears today, name pending. Uh, and we're going with a 355 to one, which is not a very big change because right now I believe the axle has 327s in it. I, Ford uses some weird numbers for their gears compared to GM. But anyway, uh, 355 to one. Yeah, it's not a very big improvement, but the reason why I went with a 355 instead of 410s or 456s is because when we get this car turbocharged, phase two, um, I wanna do the quarter mile somewhere in the eight second zone at about 160 miles an hour, which if I had a 410 or a 456, that motor would be screaming at like 8,000 or 8,500 RPM. And I'm not building the 5.4 to do that. I wanna have like a 7,500 RPM ceiling and a 355 gear will work great for that. The math works out. And then also with a turbo, it's a pretty good gear for that as well. So uh, 355s, I grabbed everything here from late model restoration. They have a simple re-gear kit that comes with everything you need um, for performance 355s. They have an install kit that comes with all the bearings and seals and all that good stuff. Uh, no wheel bearings or no wheel seals, but those are pretty cheap. And then of course it also comes with the gear fluid and the friction modifier. This is, has nothing to do with the gears. This is actually a third brake light because uh, I hate this stupid clear brake light that somebody put in. So late model has that, it's red and it kind of matches. You'll also notice that there are no axle shafts or there's no carrier here. And I will swap that stuff out at some point in the future. Right now, I didn't want to spend the money on it. Uh, but I will do probably a true track. I love true tracks. I run them in literally every car that I build. And I'll also upgrade to like a 31 spline axle instead of the 28 uh, spline that I think that's in there right now. So for now, we're just going to stick with a clutch style posi, limited slit, whatever you guys want to call it. It's literally all the same exact thing. It's got clutches. It's a limited slip. So we're gonna stick with that for now, but in the future, yes, it will be upgraded to a true track helical style limited slip. Uh, so let's get our hands dirty and get that lovely, lovely gear oil smell all through the shop. <laughs> Oh, one other thing worth mentioning. Uh, a lot of people have made comments saying that I should manual swap the car or I should chose a manual. Uh, it actually is. This car is a good old fashioned uh, three pedal stick shift manual transmission. So uh, yeah, not an automatic. Had a viewer reach out and send me this stuff. I figured this would be a perfect time to try it out. It's a penetrating lubricant called Weasel Whiz. Uh, cool thing is this guy's from my hometown or like the next one over uh, from Warren, Maine. So check him out. Weasel Industries. Ah, oh, 
Oh, not even close. Yeah. Right in the socket swimming pool. Got him. There we go. That's what we're after. Ding. Fries are done. So basically just took the cutoff wheel, kind of scored this almost all the way through, took the chisel and hit it, which cracks it. That way it loosens it up and it doesn't score the outside at all. Except for that, I nicked that with a cutoff wheel, but this surface here, perfect. All right guys, this right here is what makes me happy and it makes everything all right with the world. We've got a nice pile of parts, all cleaned up, all ready to assemble, lined up nice and neat, organized by how they're gonna go in, and there's no more oil, no more grease, no more grime. It's ready to go, and that right there, that makes me happy. So I'm gonna jump right in and do something that I normally do not recommend. I'm gonna press the new pinion bearing onto the pinion with our original stack of pinion depth shims, 33 thousandths. Um, normally this is a trial and error process. It takes several times and I use a setup bearing, which by the way, this old style bearing that the car came with is the same exact thing for a GM 8.6 10 bolt. So now we can tell people that we have Chevy bearings in our Ford, so might make it last longer, I don't know. Uh, anyway. The uh, setup kit that we got came with an updated GT500 bearing, which has a little bit steeper angle on the taper. The only problem is I don't have a setup bearing that matches, so I'm gonna press it on and cross my fingers. Now, Ford does say in their instructions that if you're replacing an OEM gear set, the original pinion depth shim probably will be the one that you need, but there's always the off chance that it won't be, and then you'll just have to pull the bearing off a couple times until we get it dialed in, which I hate pulling these bearings off. There's always the risk of damaging it. So fingers crossed, we'll get the press out, and maybe this will be a one and done. Original one had two shims, totaling 33 thousandths. Here goes nothing.
Now I'm probably gonna jinx myself and say this is the world's easiest gear install because I think, oh, I should say, I hope all I have to do is one change and we'll get this thing nailed. Haven't even run a pattern check yet. That'll be kind of like the ultimate determining factor. But I threw this thing together using the factory pinion depth shims and the factory carrier shims and that got us a little bit loose 14 thousandths of backlash. But um, if we use the handy dandy chart that Ford provides, they say that if you want a four thousandths change in backlash, you can adjust the shims by six thousandths on the carrier. And uh, check this out. Our um, left and right hand shims just happen to be six thousandths of an inch apart. So fingers crossed, all I gotta do is swap the shims and we'll be in the money. All right, so this guy goes over here. All right, so this is one of those things where you can kind of stare at the instructions forever and not really come to a 100% positive conclusion. But I think that we're just gonna send it with the original pinion depth shim and the original carrier shims just flip flops. Um, we have backlash within spec, just barely, but it's at 11 thousandths, which is eight to 12 is what you're allowed. So technically it's good to go. And the pattern for the pinion depth um, I've been reading, looking at this book forever, and it definitely does not look like the incorrect examples. Um, it's kind of like a blend between these two. It seems like you never get exactly what the picture looks like, but um, I, th I think we're just going to send it with the shim that's in there. The only way to really tell is um, if it makes excessive heat or if it makes excessive noise when we actually drive the thing. But uh, yeah, we're just going to send it. Breakaway is a little higher, but we're in free spins, about 25 inch pass. Well, first thing I noticed, we have no noise, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, total install time for this project was about two days. You know, not two days straight, but you know, two days including running to the machine shop, going to Costco, going to AutoZone O'Reilly's, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so not too bad, but was it worth it? Now, that is a excellent question because we didn't really make a huge, huge change. Went from a 327 to a 355, which is, like, I don't know what the percentage changes, but it's not very much. Uh, I think overall in the long run, this is the perfect gear for this car because eventually I want to have a T56. We're going to have a turbo with a 5.4 and all that good stuff. And it'll let me do the mile an hour that I want in the quarter mile. And it'll be good for roll racing and just a good overall blend. Um, I was going to keep the 
naturally aspirate, of course. I'd probably do like a 410 or a 456 even, but long term, I think this is the perfect gear for the car. And yeah, it'll make it'll make a little improvement now, but definitely not a huge, huge improvement. But yeah, that's the uh, that's the regearing process, I guess, in a nutshell. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, if you want to find out more or you want to learn more about that, sounds like I'm on TV. Um, if you're interested in the 5.4 teardown and motor build, check out the last video we did on that. Uh, I'm really, really pumped about that build. Um, it's just kind of something different. I like doing stuff off the wall that's different. So check out that video and come back soon. The very next video you guys see should be the ugly truck running a 10. All right, impromptu tire review, <laughs> the Nitto 420V. Definitely do not recommend in the snow. It's okay if it's like kind of deep powdery stuff, but as soon as the road gets a little bit icy, these thumbs down, which they look good on the summer. They have a good load rating for this heavy truck, but wintertime snow and ice, definitely do not suggest.